The following video is pure jokes. Don't take it too seriously. Relax, nerds. Here comes a new challenger. If you main law, there's one law you follow on Earth 1, 2, and 3, and that's to be the galaxy's number one ranked Bruce Lee fan. These people have bowl cuts, they wear yellow onesies like Uma Thurman to bed, and they pre order USC 5 just to play Bruce Lee. They've seen every one of his films and they can state every line by heart, but their least favorite movie is Game of Death. Well, actually, they like the movie up until the point where Bruce reaches the floor where he has to fight Kareem Abdul Jabbar. They don't like this scene because they refuse to believe blacks can afford self defense classes. The law fan believes at this point that the movie went woke, even though it was filmed in 1973 and released in 1979. Basically, they love Bruce Lee for the action, but they never actually listen to the words of the man because it's just easier to caricaturize him. Here comes a new Nina fans grew up with a silver spoon in their mouth. Their parents run a hedge fund, they attend a private school, and they have flute lessons in the evening. This is how they ended up evil like their main Nina. See, growing up with all that privilege has turned them into a bitch that nobody likes. When they're not being monitored by the family, they spend all their free time riding around their nice suburban neighborhood with their windows down blasting. So, so ride around with that Nina. Ride around with that Nina. Nina fans spend their youthful years getting drunk and being ran through at college frat parties before eventually meeting a sucker beta male provider that believes everything that comes out their mouth. Eventually the two marry and in old age, Nina fans never rapidly tap the B button, so they end up evolving into a Karen who spends all their free time harassing underpaid Cinnabon employees like, mm, I knew it. I knew it. This is cold. People who main King are weird. They're that one kid in the friend group who doesn't understand that WWE wrestling is just entertainment. They think it's real. If you ever stand in a good distance from one of them, shout out loud, wrestling is fake. They'll burst into tears and then they'll charge head first into you as they shout. We coming for you, nigga. The issue with them doing that though is the fact that they're not black, but it also shouldn't surprise you because King fans see no issue with Hulk Hogan's take on race relations. The average King fan's favorite show growing up was Mucha Lucha. You would think it's because it's a literal show about kids following their dreams to become the next big wrestler, but nope. King mains love Mucha Lucha because of the lack of proper hygiene. Do not ever lay in a King fan's bed because you are bound to see some <laughs> or that bed bug. Here comes a new challenger. If you play Jen, it's because you're afraid to explore the roster. I mean, why else would you stick with the default character from the story mode? You played that little four hour campaign, you got comfortable, and now you're not switching up. That way of thinking is a trauma response from your childhood. Jen mains were the middle child. The middle children often tend to be overlooked by their parents, so they usually feel unincluded in everything. Because of those insecurities, they tend to latch on to things that make them feel secure. Jen mains also relate to Jen too, because Jen isn't accepted by his batshit crazy father, Kazuya. So his storyline really helps you lean into that whole Malcolm in the middle ass personality. I mean, why work out your issues with a therapist when you can spend your Saturday nights butt mashing monitor controls with gin and also do some Paul Mains are interesting. This is the guy who trains at his local MMA gym eight days a week, and the other two days are spent doing CrossFit. Therefore, he's physically fit, has a nice job, and surprisingly a beautiful wife. Now, eventually at some point, every Paul fan gets tested in real life. You could be out on a Friday night with your lovely wife at a bar, some guy bumps shoulders with you, and now they feel disrespected. The drunk guy wants to fight, but a Paul Main just tries to defuse the situation. The issue is, is that your wife thinks your Shang-Chi, Daredevil, and Deathstroke all rolled in one. Therefore, she eggs on your op because she too has been drinking. Now, 30 minutes later, you wake up lied out on the ground and a random bystander jumps in front of you to shout, you got knocked the fuck out, man. That's right. Plot twist, Paul Mains can't actually fight. All of that training is just for show. It's in hopes it deters people from figuring out the truth. Your wife found out the truth that night and she left you on the floor asleep. Seeing you get knocked out made her pussy dry up so much she demanded a divorce. You lose everything in court and now you're wondering America on your motorcycle dressed like Paul in Tekken 8. Here comes a new People who main Jack 8 are the definition of crayon eaters. This advanced cybernetic specimen attracts the most intellectually challenged people you will ever meet. They love him because he does a ton of damage per hit, so it doesn't require much to learn. These people tend to love technology, but not in the MKBHD sense, like an actual passion. And Marquez Brownlee. Marquez Brownlee. Marquez, Marquez Brownlee. Marques and Marquez Brownlee. More so, they're drones. These are the people you've seen in the past week eating dinner out in public or crossing the street with Apple's new Vision Pro headset. They got over 9,000 gigawatts in that $10,000 gaming PC, yet nobody has joined a Discord. These people are so stupid, they actually believe hacking corporations and governments is easy. This is because they've watched one too many of those 90s films where the hacker friend would say, Just gonna hack into the mainframe and I'm in. Like taking candy 
from a baby. Here comes a new challenger! If you play John, you are quite literally the most boring person alive. Your favorite film is Spike Lee's Do the Right Thing, and it's because the title is exactly how someone would describe you. Little Miss Perfect. You're most likely good looking, perfect grades, and you excel in every hobby you partake in. At least that's the way things seem on the surface, because during the day, you may be class president, but at the school, you run an illegal operation where you force underclassmen to strip down to their underwear and sew together clothes for your Amazon dropshipping business that you learned from TikTok. The stripping down part stems from the fact that you watch New Jack City and that's how Nino Brown kept people from stealing his product. This operation is run in secret in one of the unused school rooms in the back of the school. The way you force people to work for you is you have secrets on everyone, and if they don't cooperate, you will leak them on social media. Word has gotten around school that you're doing this, but nobody can prove it because none of your slaves will speak out. All your friends have heard the rumors, but they dismissed them because of your perfect image. That is, until Power World came out. Ever since you and your friends started a Power World server together, people have noticed you're a little too good at organizing forced labor. Eventually, people put two and two together and that leads to a FBI open up here comes a new challenger if you play Zhao Yu, there's a high probability you're a dude, a weird one at that. You're one of those dudes who wears pigtails, you're someone's Discord kitten, and whenever you enter voice chat, it plays a sound. <laughs> Now, if you enjoy doing all that stuff, that's your choice. I ain't here to judge, live your truth. What makes you weird is the fact that you do all that, but you fail to realize Zhao Yu is Chinese, not Japanese. Basically, you're a fucking idiot. The worst kind too, because not only do you reduce Japanese culture down to horny anime girls, but you can't even tell the difference between Japanese and Chinese culture. The game drops you hints, by the way. I mean, look at her outfit, Chinese. Her fighting style, Chinese. Guess what she's speaking, Chinese, dude. Her name is Zhao Yu. That doesn't even sound Japanese. And to make matters worse, Shorty is running around with a Kung Fu panda bear. Pandas are only native to central China. Here comes a new challenger. Large mains are big fans of anime. Well, actually, allow me to rephrase that. They're more so fans of Dragon Ball than anime as a whole. Large mains worship Vegeta. They look at Vegeta's hairline and they think, hmm, that's not that bad. I mean, how else do you think they're capable of tolerating Lars's hair? People who play this guy only work the upper body at the gym with a heavy emphasis on their shoulders. Their hero Lars's shoulders look like boulders, so they believe they too need that so they can click faster while playing Baldur's Gate 3. Fans of this guy were definitely theater kids. I mean, why else would they gravitate to someone with such flamboyant outfits on the battlefield? Talk about main character syndrome. These fuckers are the type of people to go to target just to be the target. Basically, they're, they're this guy. People who play Leroy are fans of Mr. T, Dipset in the early 2000s, and basically anyone else who wears an excessive amount of jewelry. You can catch them at your local swap meet purchasing counterfeit designer clothes with logos printed all over them, so they have something to compliment their jewelry and help them stand out. These people crave attention like Harry and Kumar crave White Castle. If there's a challenge, count them out. These people often turn out to be scammers and thieves, and it's because they're looking for the easiest way to succeed in life. I mean, why else do they play Leroy? His strings are easy to execute, and he does a bunch of damage. And because of that, people who run this guy never get an invite to private lobbies when the boys are running sets for practice. And that's for two reasons. A, nobody likes playing Leroy mains because they think they're good. And B, whenever Leroy mains win, they can't help but obnoxiously shout, LEROY DRAGONS! Here comes a new challenger! I have one question and one question only for Asuka fans. Do you people even exist? I mean, I've been playing Tekken 8 consistently since it dropped and I have yet to run into one online. Therefore, I don't have anything to say about y'all other than the joke writes itself, y'all irrelevant. Irrelevant. Here comes a new challenger. If you're a Lily main in Tekken 8, it's because you're a Lily main in Street Fighter 6. You think it's quirky and cute to play the character with the same name in two different fighters, failing to realize that nobody cares. You also like Lily because in her intro, she's always chasing that cat. That's you, chasing pussy all day when you need to be chasing a bag because you unemployed. The only reason you can afford Tekken 8 is because you borrowed $8.75 from eight different friends. For the slow people watching, that comes out the total of $70. I think the funny thing about Lily mains is, is that her cat's name is Salt, and Lily mains always get salty when their cat calling doesn't work. Lily Lily is a classy lady, yet the people she tends to attract are classless bums. You are a hobosexual who fucks to survive for a living, and you use this character to cosplay the lifestyle you wish you had. Stop it! You're an ugly frog who needs to hop off this lily pad and hop onto another that can get you a job. Here comes a new challenge!
If you main Brian, it's no way you can convince me you are over the age of 15. Brian mains are the edgy teens who hang out after school at Zoomies and Hot Topic. You have no friends, but you do have a significant other and you're both weird as fuck. You're that couple in high school who sits on the floor with their legs and arms wrapped around one another, calling each other their pet names. And since you're edgelords, you two have weird pet names for each other like Ryuk from Death Note. You haven't had a haircut in five years, so your bangs cover your eyes, but that's okay because you're tired of looking at how degenerate society has become. Just know this person's view on degeneracy is very surface level. Brian Mains don't care about real world issues. They call anyone a degenerate who doesn't whack their schmeat three times a day to a Slipknot album like them. Here comes a new challenger. The wrong mains are that one friend who is just way too flexible. And when I say flexible, I'm not talking about in their schedule. I'm talking about physically. Oh my God. Yo, I... <laughs> That, yo, that was the most sus ass move I've ever seen in my fucking life. They love to show how flexible they hip flexes are at the weirdest times. The wrong mains are always down to kick it, but I'm warning you now, do not bring these people out. You take one of these weirdos out to bowling with your friend group and within 30 minutes, they'll be busting a split between two aisles talking about, look at me. Understand these people have foot fetishes and they will embarrass you in public. These are the type of people who will stand on top of a soapbox in the middle of a busy shopping center and start powering up like Super Saiyan Jalen. Once they're done screaming for 10 minutes, and damn near exhausted, they'll suddenly remember their training gear is what's holding back their true power of their hip flexors, so then they'll say, Now I will be able to move freely! The only problem here is by the time the weights hit the ground, the shopping center has already been cleared because your friend scared all the hoes away. Here comes a new challenger! If you play Claudio, you're a pompous asshole who thinks they're better than everyone else. The thing is though, you're not the kind of pompous asshole who gets away with their way of thinking because you're not good looking. You're the stuck up asshole who hangs out at card shops in your free time playing Magic the Gathering. Hence why you have an affinity towards Claudio. He's the magic user you wish you were instead of that fat slob from South Park. You get no bitches. Matter of fact, there's only one time I can think of where you came close to almost pulling a decent looking down to earth gamer chick off a of Tinder, but you fucked that up when y'all first linked. If you would've played your cards right, she would've busted open like a pinata. Instead, her pussy dried up like Phoenix, Arizona when she mentioned she was a gamer. Why? Because when she mentioned she loved gaming, she said that to make conversation. She was trying to relate to you and build up attraction, but your dumbass replied to her love for Call of Duty with, SHUT THE FUCK UP, BITCH NAME EVERY CALL OF DUTY. HERE COMES A NEW CHALLENGER. If you main Asusina, I know for a fact you are a STEM junkie. You're the person at the gym who refuses to listen to trainers when they tell you to cycle off the pre-workout for a month after you complain you don't feel the C4 anymore. These people have the Starbucks app installed on their phone and they purchase enough coffee that their total amount spent on Starbucks equals that of a small nation's GDP. When they're not sipping Venti's, they're watching Britney Venti give another one of her horrible takes on politics. Usually people who main this character's family roots are in Central or South America. Too bad the family views you as a gringo so you never felt accepted. Instead Instead of learning Spanish, you chose to learn how to be annoying. You attend every family reunion criticizing any relative who can't speak English, but in reality, you fail to realize the family reunion is in Peru. Here comes a new challenger. There's no if, ands, or buts that if you main Raven, you without a doubt were the kid in school who ran around the halls with their arms behind their back like Naruto. Cisco's also your favorite artist, so in your pastime, you enjoy looking at bikini pictures of adult Hinata while Cisco's thong ta thong 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 song is in the background. And seeing as you are the weird Naruto kid, you also lack social tact. You think everyone clowned you because you liked anime, and you carry that chip on your shoulder well into adulthood. What you fail to realize is, is that nobody bullied you because you liked anime. You got clowned because you stood up in the middle of class while the teacher was trying to teach and you started doing jutsu signs. Like you can't be upset, people found it funny. You took the running portion of your PE test running with your hands behind your back. It's funny. You have to learn to laugh at yourself. But sadly, that never happens. So instead, you spend all your free time online ruining everyone's day doing the African-American Uzumaki barrage with Raven. Here comes a new challenger. If you're a Leo main, you definitely main Shulk in Super Smash Bros. Not gonna go too much into depth on why, because I feel like that joke practically writes itself. Instead, I'd like to turn your attention to Leo main's weird obsession with Shulk. These people are Shulk elitists. They get mad that most people didn't play Xenoblade Chronicles when it first came out on the Wii U. Newsflash, buddy, the Wii U's lifetime sales were 13 million units. Nobody played that game. Let them find out you played the 3DS or Switch port, and they will look at you as if you killed one of their family members. But the strangest thing about Leo mains is they actually believe they have access to the same power as Shulk. These people have never gotten any action because they always end up ruining the mood. A Leo main will have a fine ass chick butt booty naked laying on the bed ready to go and they'll stand up holding a hard ass schmeat just to shout. Fuck up. Here comes a new
If you play Steve Fox, you are definitely someone who's a little bit too hands-on. And this manifests in multiple ways, by the way. Sometimes they're just annoying, and other times it's a little bit more nefarious. Let's start with the A-type, which is annoying. The annoying Steve Fox fan is just someone who's a little too helpful. They're the people who won't let anyone do anything on their own. They're the know-it-all who means well, but ultimately they just annoy everyone. Here's an example. You could be in the kitchen cooking up your family recipe of gumbo, and this Steve Fox type will stick their finger in the pot, taste it, and then proceed to tell you it needs more seasoning. Not only did they violate your sacred family recipe, but they also contaminated your dinner. Then there's the second type of Steve Fox fan, the B type, which is much more nefarious. This is the guy in the workplace who can't keep his hands to himself. He thinks he's clever too. This is the type of dude who doesn't play the traditional grab ass, and that's because in his brain, it's smoother to walk behind a female worker using the microwave and just grab her by the hips and move her out of the way. Then he thinks he can hide behind the excuse, oh, she was blocking the paper towels by standing there, knowing damn well you could have just said excuse me or asked her to pass the paper towels. Long story short, this Steve type of fan is always shocked when HR calls him into the office for an all hands on deck emergency meeting. Oh, you nasty. Here comes a new challenger. If you're a Kuma player, it's because you're unbearable. You get a kick out of ruining everybody's day. You love the fact that every time you hop online, you know your opponent is thinking to themselves, who the fuck plays this bear character? I mean, it's one thing for it to be your assigned seat, but your fat ass purposely picks the middle seat on flights to make everyone uncomfortable. Now, when it comes to your food consumption, it can be excessive, but outside of that, you live a minimalist lifestyle. You're not moved by the material things, so you tend to keep the bare necessities. Boo! When you greet people, you bear hug them, but only if they're male. You're not capable of controlling your hormones, so whenever you bear hug a woman, you're worried about her filling your boner. The plot twist is, is that Kuma mains have nothing to worry about because she doesn't. You are barely packing anything downstairs, and that's why you play this big ass character to compensate for your barely visible penis. Here comes a new challenger! If you play Yoshimitsu, you a bitch! Here comes a new challenger! Now, I know many of you are thinking I'm going to say people who play Shaheen also play Rashid of the Turbulent Winds in Street Fighter VI, but you're wrong. The truth is, people who main this guy have an unhealthy relationship with women. Straight incel weirdo behavior. Want to know how to spot a Shaheen fan? Grab their phone and open their YouTube app. If their algorithm is nothing but red pill content being recommended, Ladies and gentlemen, we got them. These people are not Muslim. They're not religious. Yet anytime a woman does something they don't approve of, you can catch them shouting, Haram! <laughs> and it's not even logical. These people will be like, did I just catch you having fun? Haram! <laughs> did I just catch you reading and writing? Haram! <laughs> Bitch, did I catch you driving? Haram! <laughs> Haram! <laughs> Here comes a new challenger! If you main Dragon off, it's because you spend all your free time butt ass naked mud wrestling strangers on the countryside. If there's no mud wrestling events going on, you partake in your local MMA street fight events you often see on YouTube and TikTok. The only problem is you get knocked out every fight. They literally only bring you back on stage because the house knows they'll be doubling their money on their parlays. You don't care though, because you work a dead end job and you have nothing else to live for. So to you, that free beer you get after every fight is worth it. You're almost like Daredevil's dad with all that losing going on in the fights. You just lack the mafia affiliations in the superhero son. What I will say you're son has in common with Daredevil is your son can't see you anymore because your wife packed up all the things and left in the middle of the night to be with that black guy she told you not to worry about. Because of that, when you aren't fighting, the rest of your free time is spent reposting go woke, go broke posts on Facebook anytime you see a black person living their best life. Here comes a new challenger! Fang fans are the polar opposite of Zhao Yu fans. These people are entirely too entrenched in Chinese culture. These are the guys who make those videos filming themselves going into Chinese businesses and then ordering food in Mandarin. The business owner is always impressed. You post the video online, it goes viral, cool. My only thing is, how many times are you gonna do this? I mean, it was interesting at first, but go be a translator or something, my G. Fang fans just be doing too much. When they not making a spectacle out of being bilingual, you could catch them in the gym being obnoxious. They're that guy who does upside down pushups or they be doing pull-ups with their ankles somehow. It's because they trying to achieve a body similar to Fangs, but they skip leg day, so they end up looking like a bouquet of flowers. Here comes a new challenger! Panda fans are pacifists just like their favorite creatures. They don't bother anyone, and they prefer to spend their free time snacking like a panda and watching their favorite movie Kung Fu Panda. They seem harmless until you get to know them on a deeper level and you find out they're all snitches. Do not tell these people anything because they will do anything to maintain the peace. In their brain, anything out of the ordinary will cause the collapse of society, and no society equals no easy access to their favorite snacks. Like you could be over a panda friend's house just chilling, right? And they'll ask you what you've been up to, and you'll admit to them you recently stole a pack of bubble gum 
because your kids were starving and you heard gum stays in your stomach for seven years before it digests. First off, you're an idiot. Second, you shouldn't have said anything. Now, I don't condone stealing, but let's be real here. It was a pack of bubble gum. It wasn't that serious, but it is to a panda mane. See, what I failed to mention earlier is the average panda mane's frontal lobe isn't fully developed, so they have the intelligence of a bear. Therefore, in their minds, stealing gum equals the cops coming to shoot up the place. So they snitch, you go to jail, and now you got some big buff guy asking you, what size is them shoes? To hang up that computer call, come over here and kiss me on my hot mouth. I'm feeling romantical. Here comes a new challenger. If you main lead, your favorite rapper are people who wear snow goggles on the side of their head. This includes people such as Soldier Boy, Ray Shrimmerd, and Chief Keef. You don't have many aspirations, but you do have one. It's to be the first person in your hood to rock the Apple Vision Pro headset on the side of your head. Lee fans aren't actually fans of Tekken. Tekken 8 is most likely their first game, and they only picked it up because they saw Lee is dressed like Trunks from some alternate timeline. These people have a strange obsession with the Super Saiyan from the future. Anytime he appears in the show, Lee fans somehow lose their trunks. Next thing you know, you're fighting with a man who's dick is out because he refused to put his pants back on. I think the ironic thing about Lee fans though is they love trunks, but they have more in common with the Ginyu Force. These fuckers are ready to strike a pose at any moment. You'll be at the mall waiting in line for a cinnamon pretzel from Auntie Anne's, and this guy will start busting it open as if he wanted sugar and cinnamon between his crotch. Hey yo, what the fuck? Here comes a new challenger. If you main Alyssa, you are definitely an annoying streamer. Your hair is dyed some random color, you swear everyone's oppressing you, and you owe back taxes every year because you barely make enough to get by. You're allergic to job applications. You'd rather spend your time blaming your audience for the lack of subs instead of being entertaining or adding some type of value. These people lack self-awareness. They don't understand their affinity towards Alyssa is a metaphor in itself. They love this chick because the chainsaw she uses represents all the family and friends the streamer cut off in order to make it on Mixer. Now, eventually Mixer collapsed so you thought Facebook gaming would be a better place to grow your platform. Nope. The right chainsaw was to cut off Mixer. Take a guess what the left one was for, stupid. Now you're back on Twitch telling your five viewers, hey guys, everyone should donate a thousand subs each so I can afford to pay my rent. Get a job. Here comes a new challenger. Guess what Victor Mains have in common with Yoshimitsu fans? You're a bitch. Here comes a new challenger. If you main Zafina, you are most likely one of them crazy bitches with some good pussy. You're the type of one who makes a man question whether or not you're crazy is worth your beauty. These chicks can read your whole zodiac chart, they collect crystals, and they wear them pants that no man can resist. You're a real life succubus who has a Morgan tattoo next to their coochie. Deal with these women if you want to, but they carry all types of evil spirits. This is the type of woman who will smack you in the face while you sleep. Naturally, when you wake up, you'll be shocked and ask, what was that for? She'll say something along the lines of, I was dreaming you was fucking with them other bitches. By the way, the mother bitches, yeah, that's her favorite phrase. You could, you could be on the game with the boys having a good time, just laughing. And she'd be like, who you laughing with? The mother bitches. Or you could be waiting in line to register to vote. She will call your phone talking about, oh, you registered to vote without me? Oh, you must be with the mother bitches. But let's be real here, fellas. You love that Zafina, man. You, you're not leaving it. Here comes a new challenger. People who main Reyna are fairly simple. You're upset there's no Hihachi in Tekken 8, so you're going with the next best thing, which is his illegitimate daughter. The only thing weird about these people is, instead of going back to Tekken 7 to get their Hihachi fix, they'd rather play Soul Calibur 2 where he appeared as a guest character. The only logical explanation behind this is, Reyna mains have been in a coma for the last 20 years and they just woke up. So you might be wondering, why were they put in the coma? It's because the father put them in one for indulging in the devil. Not the literal devil, but what their father deemed to be the devil, which is in fact any form of sex content. That's right, ladies and gentlemen. Rain and Mains were the kids who went to church 12 days out of the week, and they would indulge in secular content such as video games and mainstream music when their parents weren't paying attention. The dad found out you were playing Soul Calibur 2 and listening to mainstream music, so he threw you off a cliff like Hihachi did his son. The plot twist here is that the dad wasn't upset you were indulging in Soul Calibur 2. That's a classic. He was upset you were listening to Nickelback. <laughs> Guess what Devil Jin mains have in common with Victor and Yoshimitsu mains? You're a bitch! Here comes a new challenger! If you main Kazuya, you have a weird obsession with the term alpha and sigma male. Your YouTube algorithm is littered with self-help videos on stoicism and becoming the best version of yourself. It's just too bad you don't actually put any of those ideas into practice. You're actually a bitch and your friends walk all over you. You do your best to take lead on group activities, but everyone just ends up laughing at you. Now, you do have a girlfriend and she loves you dearly. That is until she found out you weren't the friend group leader. Matter of fact, you're the water boy and her leaving you for the real friend group leader makes you so heated. It's almost as if you have a devil inside 
lie to you like Kazuya. But the reality is, is that you don't. Your burning desire stems from the fact that you need to tap the card that's on the screen right now and watch my first impressions video on Tekken 8.